This week's item PI, long time coming. We've been waiting to do this one. It's from Digilent, and I just also want to mention, special thanks, DigiKey. Two double digis, a Digilent plus DigiKey. Not related. DigiKey and but Digilent. They're good friends. Yeah. What is this week's item PI, Lady Ada? Okay, so this week's item PI, we actually, a year ago, we did the Digilent uh, digital discovery kit, and we've also stocked the analog discovery kit, um, which is a little like USB oscilloscope, logic analyzer type thing. Um, and so um, this week there's a new product from Digilent that is kind of like, if you like the analog discovery kit, this is the, kind of the next generation, this is the pro um, analog discovery kit. It is the Analog Discovery Pro uh, ADP 3450 and I think 3250 is the other part number. And this is kind of like very similar circuitry to the Analog Discovery Pro, but it's kind of more ruggedized. It's in a nice case, and it's got a couple of, of cool things going for it, um, which we'll talk about. So um, to start off with, uh, this is a two or four channel um, oscilloscope uh, and logic analyzer. Here's just, you know, one side of it, and I'll, I'll show the whole, you know, all the different sides. Um, it's in a kind of like a pizza box case. And um, this is the back of it. And you can see some interesting stuff. There's four USB ports, there's ethernet, there's the device USB, um, there's power 19 volts, there's two trigger inputs, um, there's a power port, and then um, actually, you know, I just realized that photo doesn't have the front. So let's, uh, let's go quickly to the overhead and I will show off the front of it because I think it's worth showing early. Um, so this is me taking it apart. So there's a uh, logic analyzer and waveform generator here. You can sort of see there's uh, two by 16 pins. And then this is the four channels. This is four um, analog inputs. And what's really neat about the oscilloscope inputs is that we actually have BNC jack, so you could put probes on it. And then this is the wave gen out. This is a dual uh, DAC output, 14 bit, 125 uh, mag mega samples per second. Okay, so let's go back to this. Um, okay, so next one. Um, so I can't see the text, but maybe you can, uh, because there's a lot of specs and I wanted to get them all in here. But basically, um, you've got uh, two or four channels, uh, 55 megahertz bandwidth. Um, there's oversampling that you can get about 400 mega samples per second, if not oversampling. Um, for you know, non-repetitive, you have 100 mega samples per second, plus or minus uh, 25 volts, 50 volt uh, protected input, um, 128 uh, mega sample uh, record mode. Um, you got analog outputs, digital inputs, advanced triggering. So it's kind of all, all this stuff. It's like a little bit of like a bento box. You get um, a little bit of everything here um, in uh, the analog discovery. So even though it's called the analog discovery, it does do digital stuff as well. So um, this is a USB connected device. Uh, chances are, you know, a lot of people, they're going to con connect this to their computer. It doesn't have an LCD and it doesn't have any knobs on it. If you want to do the control part, you download the Waveforms software, you install it, and then you can see you can run on Raspberry Pi, Mac, uh, Linux, and Windows. And then um, when you run it, you can you know, do the kind of USB oscilloscope stuff that you would think of, you know, uh, capturing data, data logging, um, analysis. You can, of course, uh, run uh, scripts on it. As we've covered, Waveform has a scripting language um, that lets you, um, you know, automate the inputs and outputs. It's kind of like put pieces together to create uh, you know, data acquisition that's more advanced than um, most USB oscilloscopes because, again, it's got all that extra stuff, um, the inputs and the outputs. Um, but Waveforms is kind of like, they, they've been working on this for a few years. So this is very solid software, and I liked how responsive it was. Um, the, the graphics drawing was very fast, um, which I can't show you here because it's, it's still, but um, if you're using it, and I think there's even a simulation mode, um, it's pretty easy, and there's a, there's a lot of widgets. Um, so the thing that is, I think, interesting to think about is, yes, uh, this, you know, it is a pretty good oscilloscope, but compared to like a benchtop scope, it's, it's not going to be as good, right? Even my old tech TDS scope from like 15 years ago um, had one giga sample per second. So, you know, the question is like, why pick up something like this, right? Something that is um, not that powerful as a benchtop scope, doesn't have an LCD, doesn't have a TFT, doesn't have uh, the knobs and buttons. And I think, you know, as I was using this, I kind of realized that there's two reasons to use an oscilloscope, right? There's the debugging where you're analyzing a circuit and you're trying to figure out like, why is my I squared C not working? Why is my crystal not the right frequency? Whatever, you're, you're trying to do analysis of a circuit. Why is my power supply, you know, jittering? 
um, you know, what's the frequency, what does this waveform look like? So it's the like kind of analysis look. And then what this is good for, and you can absolutely use it for that, but what this is really good for is if you're working in a lab and you know, National Instruments is the is the wholly owned the wholly owned Digilent. And they're famous for LabVIEW, which is, you know, you're, if you're an engineer or like a mechy or a chemist or a biologist or a physicist, you're using this for data capture and analysis in academia and in industry. And so what I actually think this, the Analog Discovery Pro and the, you know, Analog Discovery and Digital Discovery are really good for is, you know, I remember when I was at MIT and I had even like people who are EEs, they're like, I really just want to quickly get data in. I have to do very fast data capture for my physics experiment. And they were like fighting with all these data acquisition tools. And they're like, you know, Arduino isn't fast enough. And this isn't good enough. And that doesn't have good enough precision. You want something that's like an oscilloscope, but something you can script and you can use within LabVIEW. So I think that this is kind of the sweet spot for this product. Yes, it can be used as a general purpose tool, but it's, it's kind of big. It's not pocketable like the analog discovery. This is a benchtop tool. This would be good for benchtop data analysis, uh, data capture, test, you know, testing, if you're doing um, testing and analysis of a product. And you know, I've seen people who have the product, they're going to put it into market. They want, it very, you want, they want to do a lot of testing on it. Um, this would be able to do like current capture and waveform output and testing the digital side and the analog side all at one, um, and it's scriptable. Again, with LabVIEW, it's going to have first-class support, and if you're used to LabVIEW, this is a great uh, partner hardware for it. Um, there's another thing that I thought was really interesting. So this is, you know, if anytime you see something with four USB ports and Ethernet, you're like, that's on a microcontroller, that's running like embedded Linux, right? Because your microcontroller is not going to be able to do USB host. It's very hard. And in fact, it is running um, embedded Linux. It's got an ARM core inside of it. And so what's interesting about this is that you can get into it and log into it as a Linux computer and they're like really into that. Like they're like, please cool. log in and then you can run software on it natively and so you don't have to worry about the bandwidth issues of trying to stream like very fast data over USB and Ethernet. Yes, USB and Ethernet can do very fast data but not as fast as like native on device data capture and, and saving. And so you, know, you can plug in um, a USB, you know, USB data stick and do like massive data capture where you're, you're, you just have less layers in between so you have a higher throughput um, and lower latency. So I thought that was kind of neat. Has too. anyone run Doom on it yet? I'm sure they will. Okay. Um, okay, so there's four options available. Uh, there's the uh, 3250, which is again the two channel, the 3450 which is the four channel, and then you've got a version with and without USB probes, so uh, uh, BNC scope probes and all the add-on cables. If you've got your collection of scope probes, which I do, you, 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 know, you can go for the cheaper version. Um, if not, get the version with uh, the probes. And you're gonna, of course, pay for more channels. It's almost twice as much because that's where the cost is, is this uh, expensive, let me see, it's the AD948, and on digital converter. That's that's what the cost is, um, and also the extra memory and the processing of the FPGA. So, um, pick whichever option. I think we highlighted. Uh, you know, this is one which has all the scope probes and the BNC. You can see the inputs and outputs. Yeah, it costs a little bit more, but uh, you're ready to rock. And they've got them all in stock, which is a oh, great reason to have I and MPI. I love it when things are in stock. That's right. Um, this is part number, this is short URL, and you wanted to play this uh, video. Yeah, it's a little, it's a two minute long video, but it kind of covers everything, uh, even talks a little bit about Linux mode. Okay, let's show it. Take it away. Digilent's ADP3450, the first in the Analog Discovery Pro line, takes the capabilities of the Analog Discovery 2 and adds pro level functionality and performance. The ADP3450 is an all-in-one measurement solution in a compact chassis. It features a 4-channel, 14-bit oscilloscope with over 50 MHz of bandwidth that can sample it up to half a gigasample per second and has 128 sample memory depth with BNC inputs for each channel to connect to standard oscilloscope probes. Two more BNC connectors provide outputs for the 2-channel, 14-bit, 125 sample per second arbitrary waveform generator. The ADP3450 also offers 16 channels of digital I.O. running at 125 samples per second, a 2-channel digital power supply that can be programmed between 1.2 and 3.3 volts, and two BNC trigger ports. 
The ADP3450 has integrated USB and Ethernet connectivity for use while connected to a PC in standard mode, but it also offers a Linux mode with the ability to run tests and store data directly on the device. This eliminates the bandwidth and latency bottlenecks inherent to streaming data to a host PC. In both modes, developers can use Digilent's free waveform software suite to control all the functionality of the ADP3450. In standard mode, Waveforms provides virtual interfaces for each instrument, with the ADP3450 capable of being configured as a digital logic or bus analyzer, spectrum analyzer, network analyzer, and more, in addition to its primary oscilloscope, WaveGen, digital I.O., and power supply functions. For Linux mode, engineers can script entire test routines that run directly on the ADP3450 without any host intervention. The ADP3450 provides great value as it comes with all instrument capabilities unlocked and the ability to use them together. It also offers four USB ports that can be used to add storage or additional hardware, such as a Wi-Fi adapter. To learn more about the ADP3450 Analog Discovery Pro, visit store.digilentinc.com.